Caccio in New York. After the great fall on stock markets yesterday, U.S. stock index futures have stabilized for now, with Nasdaq and S&P futures up four tenths percent. On the Japanese stock market, which on Monday experienced its biggest one-day drop since the 1987 stock market crash, prices rebounded today. The Nikkei index closed up 10 percent, meaning the index is net down 3 percent over two days. The kindling for the Monday fire sale was Friday's weaker-than-expected jobs report here in the U.S., suggesting American interest rates would go down briskly to head off recession. I spoke to Ben Kumar in London. He's head of equity strategy at Seven Investment Management. Management. I often think that one of the weirdest things in world markets is kind of the weekend. You know, you have all this data, all these market moves come out of the US on the Friday afternoon. If you were a Japanese equity trader, your weekend was ruined. And you've come in, you've worked yourself up into a bit of a frenzy. You know, you're probably hitting Monday morning going sell, sell, sell. And then you see that, you know, the world's not falling apart. By the time you get to Monday night, you're back interested again. The thing that I've always tried to reassure people is, you know, do not panic on the Monday morning Japan numbers. People buying and selling stocks seem to be a little worried still. There is still some impulse for rotation going on. And at the same time, I think people are just starting to call into question exactly how strong earnings need to be from the Magnificent Seven in order to keep justifying that market leadership. And when you look at the key macro indicators, because I'm thinking, well, if rates are now, what, 97% likely to be cut by the Fed in September, according to the market, doesn't it mean we could have more of these occasions coming up ahead of us? So I think there's a, a kind of justifiable caution Ben Kumar's at Seven Investment Management. Monday's results, the Dow went down 1,000 points, 2.6%. The S&P fell 3%. The Nasdaq yesterday fell 3.4%. And the AP reported that many retail customers had a lot of trouble logging into their investment accounts at Schwab, Fidelity, Vanguard, and others due, it is believed, to a surge in customer interest in logging in. Should you be making investment decisions in the heat of battle? Yesterday's vibe was tough even for a pro like Chantel Chapman, a researcher and educator focused on financial trauma. I was tuning into the news and the energy was very urgent. There was this kind of desire to open up my investment account and maybe do something really quickly. Chapman urges people to take an inventory of their own emotions before making money decisions and then to examine the hard data of what they know or don't know. So what are the actual data points that you're working with? This is where we do some education. And this is where we might be, you know, looking at what's actually happening in the economy and trying to understand it a little bit more. And then from there, we go into the vision phase, which is where we check back in with our investment plan. So did we create this investment as a long-term strategy? If you did create it as a long-term strategy, why are you putting so much weight on today's value if you don't plan to sell today? Chantel Chapman runs a financial education program called Trauma of Money. This morning we can exhale a bit, although the indexes on the German and London stock exchanges are down about four tenths percent here. S&P futures and NASDAQ futures and Dow futures are all up four tenths of a percent. Farm and heavy equipment company Caterpillar posted better than expected profits due to higher prices this morning. The stock is up three and a half percent in pre-market trading. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Amazon Business, focused on offering smart business buying solutions, leaving time to focus on growth. More at AmazonBusiness.com. And by UKG. UKG is a partner that delivers HR, pay, time, and culture solutions designed to help build a great workplace for everyone. UKG, our purpose is people. Now to the election year economy in a swing county in a swing state, Kent County, Michigan, home of Grand Rapids, Trump in 2016, Biden in 2020. Here in 2024, Marketplace's Nancy Marshall Genzer finds many voters pessimistic about their financial future. An economic forecast from Grand Valley State University in Grand Rapids predicts a slowdown in hiring in the region. 19-year-old Adriana Neely is already seeing that. Yeah, it's really, really hard getting a job. I met Neely in the parking lot of a dollar store in northern Kent County. She's unemployed right now, even though she says she's applied for lots of jobs. Even applying at 
places that are franchises, they need people to work there and you put in applications and you get nothing back. Neely gets SNAP benefits, but says after she and her partner pay their bills, there's not much left. The Kent County government says one in three households here live just above the federal poverty line. Standing in a Walmart parking lot in the southern end of the county, 25-year-old Demarcus Harris tells me he's pretty much living paycheck to paycheck. He sells adjustable beds. I want to do fun stuff too, but go on vacations, spend a little bit more time with my family in Philadelphia, you know, just be a little more free, breathe a little bit instead of just working just to pay the bills. Harris says high prices for food, gas, and shelter make it impossible for him to save. I am living alone. The rent is going up as we speak. So. A county government survey says a quarter of local households spend 30 percent or more of their income on housing. That's what 27-year-old Cotter Koopman was doing a year ago. Out with friends at a Grand Rapids brewery, Koopman tells me he now lives with his partner, splitting the rent. He's seeing more gentrification in Grand Rapids, new luxury apartments that are out of reach for him. So he thinks the economy here feels like it's running out ahead in front of people that are trying to figure out their lives here. There is some good news on wages in Kent County. Grand Valley State University predicts they'll grow about 3.5% this year. That outpaces inflation, but it doesn't help retirees on fixed incomes. Some are avoiding the more expensive food at the grocery store. 64-year-old Joyce Robinson pushes her cart right past the beef case at a supermarket in the town of Wyoming, Michigan, in South Kent County. She's buying the cheapest poultry instead. Like, I would buy me a chicken, but now I'm looking for chicken parts because <laughs> it's too much. Kent County businesses are noticing that their customers are pinching pennies. We'll talk to them tomorrow. In Kent County, Michigan, I'm Nancy Marshall Genzer for Marketplace. And in New York, I'm David Brancaccio. This is the Marketplace Morning Report from APM, American Public Media.